Vandel, one of Europe's leading listed investment firms, reports results for the full year 2016. Frédéric Lemoyne, welcome. Thank you for having me. You are the chairman of the executive board of Vandel. In your results announcement, we noted that the net asset value per share has reached a record. You must be quite proud. Oh yes, indeed we are. This is an incredible result. Uh, 162 euro per share, 7.6 billion euros as a whole. Uh, we never reached this level. Now, let's not let up. Uh, we must focus on the future value creation. Uh, but clearly, this has been a, an excellent result, which is due to uh, the, the stock market in general, which has been high, but it's due to the performance of our companies, that have been the non-listed companies, um, which have uh, revealed progressively uh, part of their value since uh, we made a number of acquisitions in 2015 for 12 months that remain at cost, and then we uh, really evaluate uh, their intrinsic value, uh, comparing them with uh, traded firm variables. We have also realized some synergies, so that explains the level that we've reached. The other big news of the day is the transaction between BASF and Stahl. Can you tell us more about it? Vandel is a long-term investor with uh, industrial roots, and this is typically the type of operation that we like to do. Uh, Stahl has been in the group for more than 10 years. Already three years ago, they acquired the leather uh, chemical business from uh, Clarions, uh, and now it's from BASF, one of the largest chemical group in the, in the, in the world. Uh, we are building uh, uh, the leader, the platform, which is the leader of uh, leather chemicals in the world, and uh, thanks to the assets brought by uh, BASF, thanks to the long-term agreement that has been uh, signed with BASF, we'll be able to provide to start customer a uh, broader scope of uh, uh, products um, without uh, investing much uh, in terms of new assets. So it's uh, really, financially speaking and industrially speaking, a very good uh, operations to be closed in uh, late 2017, so it's value to be created for 2018, but clearly a very good perspective uh, that has been uh, announced today. And what is your update on the rest of your portfolio, in which we see an increasing proportion of unlisted assets? Yeah, that's true. For the first time in our net asset value, the, the non-listed assets are valued more than 4.6 uh, billion, out of 11 billion of uh, total assets, total gross assets. Uh, this is a lot, and this is due to new investments, those are from, uh, that have been made in 2015, Constantia Flexibles, CSP Technologies, um, and also Light Barton. And uh, of course, the, the investments for, uh, that we made in 16, less uh, investment than in 15, because we, we consolidated and digested the previous ones, but uh, all the same, we did uh, some investment in Africa, SGI Africa in commercial real estate in different uh, African countries, and Cebo, the African leader of facility management that we acquired late in 16, and which uh, acquisition has been closed in the, on the 1st of February 17. So this creates more value in the non-listed. Uh, we also made uh, some operations that grow by themselves. 28, 28 acquisitions have been made last year by our companies, and many of them have been helped by Vendel. The largest one is the merger of Light Barton with Universal Services of America, creating uh, the $5 billion revenue Allied Universal, which is the leader of the security services in North America. And what is the update on the other part of your portfolio, which includes the listed companies? Well, uh, we have Bureau Veritas and Saint-Gobain. Bureau Veritas is our largest asset, uh, close to 30% of our gross assets. It has been a good year in terms of profitability, ahead of SGS and Intertech at 16.2%. Uh, however, we are disappointed in terms of growth, because uh, since the middle of 15, uh, there has not been any uh, organic growth all in all in uh, Bureau Veritas. Some sectors are growing very nicely, but some sectors have um, uh, hit some headwinds, notably from the marine industry, given the uh, decline and drop in number of uh, ships built last year in, in the world. Uh, we, that's the reason why we have launched a new strategic plan to relaunch five um, uh, strategic initiatives to fuel growth, 
and this is going well. We are very uh, hopeful that we are going to resume uh, in the midterm with uh, 5 to 7 percent organic growth at the uh, Bureau of Veritas. Uh, we are working a lot on, uh, around that. Uh, given the need uh, in the world for trust and for uh, reliability and for third party certification, I, I still believe that uh, we have very good times ahead of us uh, for Bureau of Veritas, especially uh, if and when they know how to take advantage of the digitalization opportunity. As far as uh, Saint-Gobain is concerned, there's been a very good start of the year. Uh, Saint-Gobain is uh, uh, enjoying very good trends in terms of uh, the uh, construction markets. There is a rebound in the US and in Europe. And also, I want to stress the quality of the high-performance material uh, business. It's 4 billion euro business of Saint-Gobain. It's just like 3M. And Saint-Gobain is not always compared with 3M, but should be valued uh, the same way for that part of the, of the business. So yes, that's uh, going pretty well. Everybody knows that we have sold some shares last year of Saint-Gobain, that we have entered the last chapter of our long-term story with them. However, even if it's very clear that we'll not be in uh, the shareholding of Saint-Gobain anymore in the beginning of the 2020s, uh, we, we have a, a very good surprises to expect uh, uh, between now and then. As part of the results announcement, we also noted that you've reinforced the balance sheet. Yes, absolutely. Because of the sale of Saint-Gobain shares last year, we have reduced very significantly our net debt. At the beginning of the 16, it was about 3.4 billion euros. And we have recently published slightly more than 2 billion uh, euros, so very far below the 3 billion uh, threshold that we have communicated, and we will stay like this. Uh, it's, it's also a way to take advantage of all uh, the low interest rate uh, environments. We have uh, systematically uh, tried to um, uh, take advantage of that for Vandel. Uh, our average financing cost has been reduced down to 3% and also for our uh, portfolio companies, which have uh, systematically uh, refinanced their debt. And finally, we observed that you completed your last strategic plan way ahead of schedule. So by the end of 2016, you had reached all of the objectives, and you're announcing now a new strategic plan from 2017 to 2020. What is the roadmap there? It is very much the same strategic orientation, but with a, a different, uh, uh, different metrics. Uh, if the conditions are good, you never know. You shouldn't. Uh, in in our business, we don't want to 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 uh, predict that it will be this way. It has to be this way. We have to be very flexible. Nevertheless, if the conditions are good, uh, with a right level of caution, we might uh, invest three to four billion uh, euro of equity. That's our ambition, um, and we'll do that in Europe, in North America, in Africa, possibly also in Southeast Asia. Um, and if we find the right businesses uh, to invest in, it could be on a case-by-case -case basis uh, with co-investors, the way we just did with Cebo, uh, that could bring uh, their uh, angles and their money to uh, finance 500 million to 1 billion euro um, of role. So that, that's uh, the, the view we have in, on new investments. We'll develop our existing portfolio, of course, around Bureau Veritas, uh, Stahl, Constantia Flexibles, IHS, Allied, Allied Universal, no more Allied Barton, uh, uh, Cebu and the likes. Um, and we, we, we believe that we can, with this balance between listed uh, assets and non-listed assets that should represent around 50% of our assets, with uh, uh, net debt remaining significantly below 3 billion, uh, we can uh, have a, uh, also for the first time in the history of Vandel, an average positive cash flow, uh, positive operational cash flow, uh, that will also be another reason for providing our shareholders with a, a double-digit return uh, that we will achieve both by buying back our shares on an opponist, opportunistic but regular uh, basis, and we are going to relaunch uh, our program very soon, and through the dividends that uh, will grow in line with this uh, perspective and uh, we are happy to announce uh, um, a proposed uh, dividend for our shareholders meeting of 2.35 uh, euros per share which is uh, an increase uh, by 9.3 percent compared to our dividend last year. Frédéric Lemoyne, Chairman of the Executive Board of Vandel, thank you. Thanks to you.